So we are at the end of our championship season with Stoke City. Yes, we are already promoted. Let's go wrap this up. Following on from our League Cup final win against Manchester City, we then beat York City 6-0 at home in the FA Cup fifth round. Deval with a hat-trick, Frankie Grand with a brace and Zach Howes with the other. Next up was a 2-1 away win against West Ham United, Vedran Stamankovic and Paul Watson with a 93rd minute winner when they went down to 10 men in the 59th. They were 1-0 up at that point. We then beat Sunderland 3-1 at home. Deval, Stamankovic and Jubilbis with the goals. We then beat Bournemouth away from home. Jubilbis again with another goal this time in the 19th minute, giving us the three points on the road. We then unfortunately suffered defeat in the FA Cup quarterfinal at the hands of our former club, Birmingham City. This was a Premier League side, so it's sort of understandable. And we definitely gave them a good game away from home, but... We couldn't get quite we couldn't quite get past them. Next up was a home tie against bottom of the league Exeter, which we won 4-2. Stamankovic with a uh, hat trick and Luke Sanders with the other goal. We then beat Everton 3-1 at home. Korobov, Stamankovic and Grand. Slager and Stamankovic got the goals in a 2-0 home win against Brentford. A disappointing one all draw away from home against QPR followed. Gavin Barton put us in front 78 minutes in. They equalised through a penalty in the 86th minute. And we then suffered our worst defeat of the season. <laughs> Leicester City beat us 5-1 away from home. Paul Thomas with the brace, Dale Cornell, Rudy Ferraro and Robin Robin. Robin Robin. Are you, is that real? That's real. Robin Robin. There we are. <laughs> Frankie Grand with the only goal for us in the 64th minute. And that, of course, means we are the champions of the championship with one game remaining. We are 32 points ahead of second place Southampton alongside Bristol City and Everton so the other automatic spot is up for grabs between those sides and yeah it's just been a very thoroughly good season although it is not the highest points total we've ever received in the championship that actually goes to Barnsley all those years ago we got 116 points with Barnsley only suffering defeat twice in that season in the league so uh, yeah Stoke couldn't quite match that due to those drop points against uh, QBR and Leicester City so our final game of the season is against ninth place Millwall at home. Let's get to that point and I will see you at kickoff. So for our final game in the championship, we're only missing a couple of players who would usually be starting. Zach House is suspended, Calero is injured, so Watson comes in at the centre of midfield and uh, Trofinovic comes in at centre-back. But other than that, we're pretty much full strength. Frankie Grand is definitely really, really developing quite nicely since we started giving him first-team football. He scored nine goals in 24 games in the championship. And as you can see, he's quickly becoming a very, very capable player. We'll have to keep an eye on that over the course of the summer as we look to make our changes with our squad and stuff. But let's get through this game. Mick Van Slimming, of course, plays for Millwall, our former man at uh, West Brom, who we sold for 22.5 million quid. Trey Chandler was a man I would try to sign in the summer of this season. He decided to join Millwall over me, and I hope he likes his decision still in the championship. <laughs> Anyway, let's get to the game, see how we get on. First highlight of the game comes 20 minutes in. We're on the attack down the left-hand side. Our midfield, uh, Duval and Jubilbis combine and Watson over to Delonzo on this right-hand side in a pot of space. Burton, Barton even. Uh, he goes for goal, he hits a post. Stamankovic cannot quite get there. The defence manages to get it clear. And Mick Van Slimming clears it to Delonzo. Is that this highlight continuing? It might be. Barton again on it. Duval, he's got space on the left-hand side for Korobov. He's in the box, he gets challenged. It's a decent challenge by the defender. Could have potentially been a penalty there, but they do get a clear. Corner for us. Korobov takes it. Trofinovic is there. He hits the woodwork and it goes back out for another corner. We'll see it again. Korobov whips it in. It's cleared this time. Duval is first to it and it's cleared by the Millwall defence. A decent enough first half. Not really creating that clear-cut opportunity we need. Uh, I'm going to tell the boys I'm far from pleased from what I've just seen. Shocked and horrified and we get a corner straight away after the second half. Korobov playing it in and we have been given a penalty. I have no idea what it was for and I don't really care to be quite honest with you. Stamenkovic will be the man who steps up two minutes after half time and um, misses the penalty. Where's Neil Lee field when you need him? 61 million quid, he would have scored that penalty. So the Millwall goalkeeper currently averaging a 7.3. Uh, if you know football manager at all, you know that is absolutely ridiculous. And he's having a very, very good game keeping us out. As we go close once again through a corner and we get ourselves another highlight. This time a throw in on the right hand side. Frankie Grant heads it on and Vedran Stamenkovic gets that first 
and a simple long ball throw in. We need Rory de Lapp back in this side. Dolonzo to Grand to Stamenkovic, the keeper. I mean, I will be dropping his average rating after that little bit performance. And we go 1-0 up 60 minutes in. Another highlight now, Korobov with a corner again. Trofinovic is there from post. And he gets his sixth goal of the season to put us 2-0 up 67 minutes in. Once again, the front ball uh, from post corner tactic does prove to be one of the most effective. And we get ourselves 2-0 in front. Millwall have a highlight straight from kickoff. Hopefully, they're not about to uh, get themselves back into this game. They are coming forward down this right-hand side with Goldberg. They go all the way back to Yara. If we pinch the ball here, we've got two men up front who've got pace and can really cause them some issues. Looks like they're going to keep possession well, though. And they switch the player back to this right-hand side with Mick Van Slemming. He whips it in. Thompson goes close. And with only about 15 minutes to go, we're going to make all of our subs. Uh, we'll get Slagger on for Duval. We'll get Julian de San Pedro for uh, Chris Dubelbis. And we'll get Korobov off for Jabari Cox as we have ourselves another corner. Korobov, before he goes off, almost gets another assist. But Trofinovic kind of get that one on target. Tacking down the left-hand side this time to De, de San Pedro and Cox combining. Good challenge by uh, Murphy from Millwall. Keeps us away from our attacking areas. But we do switch the player to this right-hand side with Delonzo. Back to say San Pedro. Come on, boys. Delonzo. Can he whip it in? He hasn't got the best crossing, but he can. Stamenkovic is there, back post. And Bedran Stamenkovic gets his 30th goal of the season to put us 3-0 up, 78 minutes in. Now, Stamenkovic didn't really start this series, uh, this season, that great. But he's definitely started to come into his own a lot more since Neil Leafy left in January. And that's where we've seen a lot of his goals come in the second half of the season. 87 minutes in, Millwall have a free kick and then get themselves a goal back to maybe cause a little bit of an issue, but it's probably a bit too little too late. Luke Thompson then with his 18th goal of the season for them. A decent free kick to the back post. Stefan Polk can't do anything about that one. Another highlight with only four minutes to go. Once again, Millwall on the attack, but Barton wins the ball and sets away Stamankovic. They must have been pressing with a high line, but Stamankovic can't quite beat Thorpe one-on-one. -on -one. We'll stick with this corner. Delonzo's the man to take it. Doesn't even beat the first man. We need Corobal back on the pitch. And there we have it then, boys. Stoke City 3, Millwall 1. We will take that as our final game in the championship. 113 points is what we will finish on in the league now. Let's go find out who's getting automatically promoted alongside us. So it's going to be Southampton, Everton, Brighton, Bristol City and West Ham. will have to fight it out in the playoffs. But... Uh, there we are then. Let's get our end of season stuff. Here we are. We finally have our end of season awards. Chris Jubilbis was voted as player of the season with 37% of the vote. Stamankovic and Korobov complete the top three. We'll have a look at Derval's uh, goal of the season shortly. Signing of the season was Stamankovic. Young player of the season was Stamankovic. He was a decent enough signing at two and a half million quid. 25 goals and 12 assists and 41 league appearances. Isn't too shabby. Now we'll quickly take a look at this Derval goal, which was voted goal of the season. Calero's coming down the right-hand side. He whips it in for the first time. Oh, that is a good goal. Fantastic goal. It was a memorable season for Stoke as they tasted success in the Skybet Championship and Carabao Cup. Stoke had been expected to be in the run for the playoff, playoff place, but performed even better than expected by finishing top of the pile as champions. It was a season of jubilant success for the Potters. Who got off to a tremendous start in September that propelled them in the first place, providing them with the platform of exceed expectations and winning the competition. Way! Notts County was match of the season, a 6 0 win. Leicester City was the moment to forget a 5 1 away defeat. We were only 88% full of our stadium. Come on, Stoke fans, you know, get involved. 26,529 isn't too bad, though. And obviously, won the championship, won the League Cup, lost in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup against Birmingham City. In terms of next season, though, as you're already probably aware, the board have robbed me of some of my transfer funds. We now only have £46 million available for the summer transfer window with 286 k available in the wages. Now, I have made a couple of signings, which you can't see because I've hidden them. Um, so we have spent around £10, £13 million of that. So we have a couple of positions already sorted coming up for the season. In terms of our finances, we've got £96 million, projected to have £121 million by the end of the season how they can justify taking basically 60 million quid out of my transfer budget whilst not increasing my wage budget hugely 
Um, you know, it was £1.2 million was our transfer budget. Next season's wage budget's only going up by about 150 k So, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with this Stoke City board. But in terms of our team, then where are we going to go? Obviously, with our reduced transfer budget, we've got to be a little bit more realistic in the sort of wholesale changes that we can make. I think Stefan Polk, the signing we made in January, is good enough for the Premier League. Now, obviously, this is all subject to change in terms of what's available. If there's a free transfer, that's better than him available. Of course, I'm going to make that sign. And it's just in terms of priorities, goalkeeper is pretty low down on them. Centre-half, Zach House has probably been our main man. He's started pretty much every game he has been available. He's not good enough for the Premier League. At least I don't think. He might end up having to be one of our centre-halves. Luke Sanders, probably a bit more well-rounded. Not as highly rated by my assistant manager. Even the same with uh, Trofinovic. He's played plenty of games as well. And he's more well-rounded than Zach House as well. Um, I'm not happy with any of them. I would like two new centre-halves. Walter Delonzo, another new sign in January. I think we're going to persist with him at right wing back. Obviously, once he becomes naturalised, he's already been training there for about five, six months now. So hopefully, within a couple of months of the new season, he will be a natural right wing back. And that will improve his performances during match days. Chris Dubelbis, again, another one who I'm probably not going to look to replace unless a massive offer comes in from either Porto or Benfica, valued at 17.5 million at 30 years old. If we'll get 30, 35 million pounds from, I probably would make the sale. But if not, I think we've got a good deep lying playmaker in the defensive midfield already sorted. Now we'll have Korobov, who's had a fantastic season at left wing back. He's natural there. He's very attacking. It's just his defence which really lets him down. And obviously, with us playing such an attacking formation, we sort of need everybody to at least be capable of defending when called upon. And uh, I think we are going to look to at least provide a more defensive option at left wing back with Korobov being the more attacking one. Central midfield, Duval's had a fantastic season. 12 goals and 16, uh, 8 goals and 13 assists, sorry, in the league with 12 goals and 16 assists coming in all competitions. Now, I don't trust these star ratings. Three star, at, he's stupidly well-rounded. There's no way he's a three star player. Um, as I met Zala or a box-to-box -box midfielder, I think he's absolutely fantastic in either role, which is obviously the two that we deploy. So I think he will likely end up being one of the two central midfielders who start the season for us. Attacking midfield, we are going to need somebody new. Gavin Barton and Andy Dunn have been sort of vying it out for that position and neither of which have made it their own and they're not particularly good enough anyway. Uh, Frankie Grant, he's going to be a backup player for us next season. I'm going to keep him at the club uh, and I'll give him as much game time as possible without uh, turning down our chances of winning games too much. Obviously, I've chucked him in now because we were absolutely laughing at the league. Uh, but we can't necessarily do that in the Premier League if we want to get the best performances. He's currently wanted by West Brom. So you never know. A thirty, forty million pound bid might tempt me to sell. Stamenkovic is a bit of a weird one. Um if we can get a cheap replacement, I will. If not, likelihood is he will be one of the starters for us in the Premier League season, which means we've got a huge a huge bit of business still left to do with or with one, two, three, four, five, six players needing to come in for our first 11 now i've got two i've got two already idle probably coming in so maybe four players with the 46 million pounds left now whether we can get the quality to really make a push in the premier league obviously we've got the european campaign to worry about as well so we are going to have to strengthen our depth at the same time we might have to end up utilizing the loan market the free market the older player market more than we ever have done in the past but that's something out of course i'm prepared to do it looks like the board want to add a lot of new things for the club culture next season. Um, fight bravely against relegations likely to be the expectation we go with. If they can offer me a load more money for increasing that, I will certainly be uh, interested in doing it. Reaching the quarterfinal of the Europa League 2 is not too bad. I'd, I'd imagine the group stage is going to be pretty easy for a, a team at our level. So yeah, it's going to be a massive new season. And I have been thinking, obviously, I've received some comments about this series. This will probably be the last club we do during Yo Yo Man. So this is our final swing at it. We need, a hopefully, a good Premier League run. Hopefully, a good Europa League run to see us off on the right foot. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.